This is the, such a great honor to be uh, with all of you from all around the world. We have many participants uh, and uh, many colleagues. Uh, for today, this is uh, really a, a great day because we reached our fourth annual International Sports Pharmacy Symposium as uh, reintros reintroducing sports pharmacy after several decades, uh, we feel that we need to reintroduce sports pharmacy. This will be a, nearly a half day Zoom uh, event. We will have some several sessions. And finally, finally, we will have a breakout room session. This will be uh, highly inter interactive. As I told you at the beginning we are targeting uh, this networking so we are all together for safeguarding athletes for bridging pharmacy with sports with promoting exercise and public health uh, and uh, for providing health care to drug expertise Welcome to the dynamic world of sports pharmacy. My name is Ashley Anderson. When we think of dynamic, we think of change, progress, things that are full of energy. And when I think of the dynamic world of sports pharmacy, I think of the way that we have established and maintained our baseline knowledge over time, the scientific inquiry, the way we have developed our skills. Sports pharmacists seek innovative opportunities to work in sports and with athletes, and these might be outside of the box for the typical pharmacy career. We've put in a lot of effort to gain that knowledge, and we've also accepted feedback to change what sports pharmacy is. It's taken a lot of effort also to increase the public awareness and attention to pharmacists. So when I say trying to expand the public awareness of pharmacists, I want to use my career as an example, because when we think of sports pharmacy and how it is dynamic, I'm just one pharmacist with one example of my career, but I want to focus on the ways that I tried to think outside of the box to try to inspire you to think outside of the box as well when it comes to your sports pharmacy career and how you might advance yourself as a sports pharmacist. I have been a clinical staff pharmacist for my entire 25 year career working in acute care. But the majority of my time I actually spent in Olympic City, USA. Maybe you're like me and you didn't want to leave your current career in order to become exclusively a sports pharmacist. So early on in my career, I began picking up extra shifts at another hospital that was over a two and a half hour drive away into the mountains. But I knew working those shifts, I could gain experience working with some orthopedic surgeons that were dealing with elite athletes and winter sports injuries. And there I was able to gain skills in working in anticoagulation, pain control, and perioperative services related to athletes. I also created a spot for myself working with an exercise physiologist at a cardiac rehab facility. It's not something that existed. It's not an idea that they came up with themselves. It was something that I said, hey, I'm a pharmacist who can do this. And they gave me the opportunity. And it didn't come with a lot of no's or many times I heard I was overzealous or I was trying to push the scope of a pharmacist but ultimately I was able to describe the way that I could help benefit their services. Another position that I held as a sports pharmacist was working with the US Anti-Doping Agency. And I spent a lot of time answering calls on the drug reference line, taking calls from athletes, athlete sport personnel, or the general public about the status of medications in sport. And through working with the US Anti-Doping Agency, I developed educational materials, had inside perspective on TUEs and the application process, but I also pushed for them to create better SOPs and helped influence the policies around drugs in sport. 
Much of my time with the U.S. Anti-Doping Agency was also spent on developing and maintaining the drug database for the Global Drug Reference Online. I had the opportunity to be an expert witness as a pharmacist in a doping case. You might be aware that the quality of products is a big concern when it comes to dietary supplements in the United States. And I actually spend a good portion of my time learning how to appropriately identify the quality of raw products by studying herbal medicine in China. And then in order to be a more well-rounded medical volunteer at local sporting events, I earned my EMT certificate so I could contribute more than just being a sports pharmacist on the sidelines. Attending conferences is another great way to network and describe what pharmacists are capable of. I've done presentations for athlete support personnel and attended events outside of pharmacy conferences. And this helps ex uh, explain our role to others as sports pharmacists and tell them what we're capable of. But as I mentioned, even though I'm aiming for this target each time, trying to be innovative, trying to reinvent pharmacy services, trying to be service-based, there were several times that I missed the mark many times where I had disruptions, things that threw me off target. And through the years, I have realized that I need to prioritize my P's. And I suggest you do this as well. Looking at that list of P's and maybe adding some of your own, how do you put those in order? What are your priorities as a pharmacist and what will you prioritize as a sports pharmacist? As pharmacists, we need to change our thought patterns. Right now, we place so much of our worth on the product that we dispense. But we have intrinsic value as pharmacists that we have earned with our knowledge, we've developed our skills, and we have a trusted reputation as healthcare professionals. Which one is more important to you? I'd like to look back for a moment and think about the global reports on sports pharmacy. In about 2021, we thought it was about time to review the 2014 FIP guidelines that were titled The Role of the Pharmacist in the Fight Against Doping in Sport. But we thought, how should we evaluate our profession? And we knew that we needed to focus on pharmacists and their contributions to athlete health and sport. So we decided to do an update. In order to do this evaluation of our profession, we thought it would be best to review the impact of these guidelines and focus on the pharmacist's contribution and what future opportunities there might be. We knew that the FIP guidelines were the official document that were written to guide support and advanced physical fitness and clean sport through pharmacy awareness and advocacy. And so to understand a little bit behind those guidelines, those were published because there were some major doping scandals that had occurred. There were data breaches of athletes' medical records, and those were accessed through anti-doping authorities without strict policies for patient privacy standards. But there was also a fast-growing market and more accessibility to anabolic agents. There were more designer stimulants that were being sold in sports supplements. And there were also more problematic drug-related practices that were compromising athletes' health. And this was related directly to heavy drug dis distribution to sports professional teams directly. And there was also an opiate epidemic, and we saw overuse of Ketorolac, among several other drug-related practices where pharmacists were not involved directly in the care of athletes. And then at the same time, around 2010 or so, we also saw pharmacy organizations had discontinued their own anti-doping or drugs and sport policies. And the organizations had suggested that that role should be for the non-medical anti-doping authorities. When we looked for schools of pharmacy that were still teaching sports or exercise or anti-doping, we found very few examples throughout the world. To collect data for the global report, which was intended to be the update, we did online research and we saw examples through FIP membership. We also did extensive pharmacy literature research and we surveyed many people within our own networks. And I personally conducted over 40 interviews with pharmacists who were working with athletes or in sports. 
From there, we took that data and we tried to evaluate what was the current state. But the findings were a little bit difficult because there were so many pharmacists and pharmaceutical scientists who had dedicated themselves to sports and athletes, but they were in many different pharmacy settings and many settings outside of pharmacy. But what they shared in their foundation for the knowledge and the skills that they were using was that athletes were the population of focus and they had a strong sense of sports integrity. But the, the, the group was diverse and they were either with direct or indirect patient care of athletes and that could include animals as athletes. They might be using pharmacotherapy skills or working exclusively in pharmacy operations. There were those in administrative or exclusively working in policy development. There were several who were working in legal aspects or code enforcement. And then we have pharmacists who are working in doping deterrence and several who are working with anti-doping education and many who are still mentoring or teaching sports pharmacy electives and many other areas as well. Since the publication of this report in 2022, we have now seen that more pharmacists are collaborating, sharing best practices, mentoring, partnering, teaching, messaging online, messaging in magazines and their communities, and meeting with each other. We're seeing increasing numbers of pharmacists who share this passion for sport, athlete healthcare, and the athletic lifestyle. When it comes to clinical sports pharmacy or the direct care of athlete, we've seen this growing as well. There has been a shift to wellness services after the pandemic, and this is primarily a public driven demand. So how are we as pharmacists going to fill that demand? We've seen more pharmacists trying to participate in local team-based sports and seen an increasing number of direct to athlete consulting services. We've also seen the reestablishment of pharmacists being embedded as sports pharmacists in university athletic programs after many years of not having that service. I've also seen a growing number of pharmacists partnering with sports dietitians, physios, and athletic trainers. And you'll find many examples of students who are trailblazing their own residency programs in sports medicine. And if you're on social media at all, I am sure you have seen the explosion in sports pharmacy topics. These are a few of the sports pharmacy education programs that have been well established over the years and are helping to describe and define sports pharmacy as a specialty. This new current state of sports pharmacy. This might be some of the do's and don'ts that I recommend based on what I've seen in social media and the way that sports pharmacy has developed and been dynamic over the years. First of all, when it comes to the do's, look for augmented training pathways. Build your own skills to launch a successful practice. For instance, find a mentor, partner up with someone you can trust. Select your target audience. Make sure that you know the audience that you're focusing on so that your message can be clear. And then encapsulate your expertise into sound bites, short clips, and easy to understand content for that target audience. And be able to respond to misinformation. We are the experts. Be mindful of your reputation. It's a small world of pharmacy. It's also a small world of sports. And it's a very small world of sports pharmacy. On the don't side, don't rely on AI to generate your content. We've seen numerous inaccuracies, and in fact, some are glaring to the point that athletes have even mentioned to me, does that pharmacist really think they know what they're talking about? You don't wanna be that type of person to get that type of response from your audience. Also, don't try to educate all audiences. Going back to your target audience, make sure your message is clear for the target audience that you're looking to attract. Don't provide medical advice online. Don't post misinformation or misleading content. These things are basic professional standards that we should all live up to as pharmacists. But also, don't share or create content that attracts the attention of the authorities and anti-doping or law enforcement. And again, if we are trying to maintain our reputation, we don't want to promote doping agents and we don't want to give false or misleading statements when it comes to dietary ingredients. And then lastly, don't compromise sports integrity if you decide to use the title of sports pharmacist. We have a certain standard that we want to maintain as sports pharmacist. 
Lastly, I'd like to offer some 2025 predictions. The first is that I imagine there's going to be less demand for a global pill from pharmaceutical companies. And simultaneously, the public is going to see increasing marketing of questionable dietary supplements, often through social media influencers or affiliates. And oftentimes these won't be medical personnel. I also think that while athletes will remain strictly liable per anti-doping code for anything found in their sample, that the athletes are increasingly going to hold distributors or influencers or sellers of these products accountable for either misinformation or contamination found in the products. I also think that we're going to see increasing sports pharmacy expertise around the contamination risks for athletes, whether that be from food or dietary supplements or other sources. And I also imagine that sports pharmacists are going to establish best practices for better clinical governance and athlete health, including guidance on sports supplements and sales. And right now we don't have many pharmacists who are involved in creating clinical guidance uh, for clinical governance for athletes health. So there's lots of opportunity out there for sports pharmacists to become more involved. And the last is, I think we'll see a movement towards new clinical trial designs. As the public consumer becomes more educated, they'll actually begin to seek to be enrolled in these expert-led programs to determine whether or not what they're taking is actually working. And so how can a sports pharmacist be involved in those type of innovative practices? That concludes my presentation. Again, my name is Ashley Anderson, and I hope you enjoy the rest of this program.